a lot of the preseason rankings have, have talked about how this pitching staff has, has done a lot to boost this team's standings. What have you seen from your group of pitchers that you'd think would make that happen? You know, I, I think that they're talented, and, and we knew that coming in that they were all pretty talented. Um, but just they've kind of cleaned up some of the small things, and, and that's what my main goal with them has been for the last couple months is really committing to going strikes, challenging people. Um, when you face our lineup every weekend, um, that, that's something that sometimes is hard to get through to them because those guys are so offensive. But it's a really good group of workers, and, and they've they've uh, really adapted to the system and, and really taken it in stride and are excited about it. And, um, they've done nothing but, but a good job kind of learning on the fly, especially when you have to compete, but you also have to um, change a couple of things, and, and we're working with everybody, so it's not an easy time for them, um, but they've been great, and, and uh, I expect them to, to pitch well and, and be aggressive, and, and that, that's the mentality that we've developed over the last couple of months. On a day-to-day basis, JK, what are your points of emphasis with your guys? It's been really simple. Um, like I said, they're so talented that we want to throw strikes. We want to control the running game. We want to field our position. We want to limit um, kind of free bases for the, the opposition with our offense. Like we've talked about, we, we need to throw strikes and, and try and avoid big innings. And, and if they're going to score a run, that's fine. Um, but let's let's minimize that stuff and, and control what we can control, which is competing and throwing strikes. How do you approach working with players who worked with different pitching coaches last year or even during the summer? Yeah, it's it's that's kind of this generation. I mean, the kids that we're getting nowadays have had – private pitching coaches and multiple pitching coaches and and they've sought out information so those kids are usually very um open to, to that stuff and, and new ideas and and they're more inclined to want to learn um whereas you know 20 years ago they kind of just did what you said and, and and it didn't matter what you said they were going to do it now they have opinions of their own and, and they've worked with good people so you've got to you've got to know what you're talking about and you've got to get them um, to believe that, that they, you can help them. And once they believe that, then it's usually no problem. What attracted you about this job? I mean, I think this is the best assistant job in the country, um, you know, with the tradition and and what Ben and Tracy and Mike have built um, with this uh, roster. It was something that was really attractive and, and, you know, wanting to compete at the highest level and, and be able to have a chance to go to Omaha every single year is something that, that I've always wanted to be a part of. The preseason ranking, what, number three in the country right now, what? How, does that play into the factor of your decision kind of along the lines of this team is really good? Yeah, I mean, I, you didn't know what the rankings were going to be when this whole thing went down in the summer, but you knew playing against them that they had really good players, and, and they're going to continue to have good players. It's somewhere where you can recruit nationally every year, and that's attractive. How could you see helping just the pitchers in general, and what could you bring to the table so to speak? Um, some, hopefully some consistency and, and just the ability to teach and, and help them get better and, and, you know, hopefully they trust, um, the plan and, and the reputation and then, and then it's easy to, to work with those guys. So they're really good kids. How much does it help your pitchers to pitch with an offense behind the caliber? You would think it would. I mean, I wouldn't mind, um, a team pitching on a team that averaged what nine and a half runs a game last year. I mean, that's, that should ease your mind, but you know, that's also something that you don't even want them to think about. It's about us. It's about each pitch. Um, it doesn't matter if it's 10, nothing or one, nothing, or the bases are loaded or it's raining. It's a pitch and a location. And that's all we're focusing on. Is Spencer a good test for your pitchers? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I would like for him to get out every once in a while um, so we could gain some confidence, but he's the best hitter I've ever been around. I mean, especially the last month or so, he's been unbelievable. Um, so, yeah, when you have somebody, and it's not just him, it's it's Workman and Hover and Alika and Swift and all those guys, Miles, those guys are good. So, I mean, even if you get Torque to pop up because you get him out in front, you've got Alika hitting next, and you're just like, man, this never ends. So it's a good challenge every day, but I wouldn't mind a clean inning every once in a while not having to face one of those guys. Do you have a sense of what your rotation will be next week? I do. I do have a sense. That doesn't mean I'm going to tell you, but, <laughs> but I do have a sense. Um, we got to get through this weekend. Um, and, and we're going to kind of line it up this weekend of what we think is the best thing to do. With with the five games in five days, it puts a little bit of a, of a wrinkle on what you would ultimately want to do. So it's not going to be as simple as this guy, this guy, and this guy. You're going to have to match up, and, and we want to win games. So that rotation may change what we're doing Tuesday because we have to use him on Saturday to win a game. So we're going to play to win every game, and, and as you guys know, it never, it never goes as smoothly as planned. So... Um, 
at this point, we'll probably have something for you guys next week or so, but we want to get through this weekend first. How does that? Oh, sorry. How does say Dabo looks like he's a candidate to be at the back end? How has he improved, do you think? He has been incredible. I mean, there was always talent. There was always velocity. There was always a repertoire. It was just more consistency. And I know he finished really good last year and he pitched great in the Cape. So I think confidence has been great for him. Um, and just feeling like he's on a roll. You know, he, he's pitched well for, shoot, almost a year. Um, so he feels really good about what he can do. And, and he's been great. We've talked about roles and, and with the draft. And, you know, there's a lot of pressure on him to be good and, and he's been nothing but great you know i'll do whatever you guys want i'll do whatever helps the team um so I, i've got nothing but respect for him and the way he's handled everything how does did you first meet cooper benson back in the san luis Obispo? oh man i don't know I, I think he was probably seven or eight um and he would come to um our cal poly baseball camps and and we had a great time i mean i was i was in charge of of one field um, you know, for the game situation, and it seemed like he was on my field every game. So we had a blast. I mean, he'd hit a homer, I'd strike him out. Um, but yeah, I've known that family for a long time and, and have really kind of grown up um, in my coaching career, and, and the Bensons have always been around. How does, how does it help having that potentially dominant arm on the back end of your bullpen? I mean, it, it changes everything. And, and if you guys, like you did, followed them last year, that was where they struggled at times, is, is in the you know seventh, eighth, and ninth innings. So um, on all the, the good teams that I've been a part of, we've had somebody back there that, that you could rely on for you know sometimes six outs, um, depending on, on what their usage has been. So, and it, it shortens the game, especially when you know um, when you look down there and there's stuff like he has, it's not just a closer who has a great reputation. You're talking about 95 to 98 with big league um, repertoire. So it's going to shorten games for us. We, we've got to figure out who's going to throw the eighth and who's going to throw the seventh. And um, if we can get six innings out of our starters, you know, you're looking at hopefully two innings where, where they feel like they've got a chance to score because that ninth inning, it's going to be over. How impressed have you been with Luke Laflam and Will Levine as far as their development goes to potentially be that guy in the eighth inning? Yeah, they've been great. I mean, we started off a little bit bumpy with them early in the fall, and, and we had some conversations, and we cleaned some things up, and, and they got themselves on the right track, and both of them have been really good. Um, Laflam, especially the last five or six outings, has been you know borderline dominant, so I'm excited. I don't know you know, where they're going to fit in on day one. Um, and and we'll, we'll kind of hopefully plan that out this weekend. But, you know, one, once the crowd shows up and the lights turn on, we'll know even more about them. But, but I expect them to to be ready for that and and, and take that in stride and, and be great for us. With Levine, I mean, the point he kind of felt like it was starting to turn things around last year was that outing he had at Washington. I think it was like three and two thirds scoreless. Mm -hmm. Do you remember anything about him from that outing? I don't remember the specifics, but I remember we were getting going and he kind of came in and shut us down for a couple innings and and he's got the ability to do that I mean he can he can run it up there when he needs to in, in kind of that 91 to 94 range and and has an above average slider at times if we can keep him in the zone and keep him really focused on the competition part of it then he is good as anybody we've got back there what was reconnecting with Cooper like after a long time when is, it, is there like a comfort level like coaching him that you've known each other for so long yeah we've known each other obviously for all that time and I recruited him at Washington yeah. so he came on a visit and, and you know, he has family up there, so so we stayed in touch with the whole recruiting process. Um, and just to, he knows kind of my personality. Um, he knows my sarcasm. He knows, you know, when to take me seriously and when I'm joking. So I think for him, it's a comfort level. And, and when you're a freshman, that, that's a big deal, uh, feeling comfortable at the ballpark, because a lot of times things are going real fast for you at that point, and you're just trying to get your feet on the ground. Um, but him, I think having some, some familiarity with me has probably hopefully helped him. What are you most looking forward to this season? Um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing, especially the pitching staff compete. I mean, they have a lot of expectations and, and a lot of naysayers that, that they've been the problem. And, and if we had this and that, you know, we, we had an Omaha team last year and this and that. So I'm excited to see them kind of rise to the occasion and, and hopefully be a focal point of our team and, and something that we can rely on. And, and I think they're chomping at the bit to show you guys and everybody else that things have changed and they're better and, and they've worked and they deserve um, a little bit of attention because they're going to do really well. Appreciate it. Thank you.